So, I sent my project. Oh my f- <laughs> And I put it down to my midweek training during that time that really made the difference. In-season training is such a tightrope to walk because a little too much and you're going to be too tired and you're not going to send your project on the weekend, but not quite enough and you're not quite going to be able to have the juice to send the project. How do we do it? Coming into this season, I was 60 days deep on the Humper Trouble project. I've done multiple 34s and 35s and never come close to even like a third of that amount of time on one project. This thing was pushing me. My approach coming into the season was to get as rock strong as possible coming into it and then once we were there, work on my capacity. It's 15 moves long and no sight of a rest. So the stronger you are, the better things are gonna feel. The season down here is kind of winter autumn, which is like, you know, May to September here in Australia. Leading into this time, I bolted a lot outdoors and a lot on the woody as well, but was also keeping kind of the flow and confidence on rock, clipping bolts, trying to repeat old things that I'd done or find new things to climb as well. It's really easy to underestimate the flow and confidence that you need moving across rock on hard red points. And for me, it always feels better if I've just got that ticking away in the background pretty constantly because then when it comes time to do it, it's right there and I can just grab it. So I was feeling pretty good leading into May, which is when I first got down there. I knew that those first few days on the project weren't going to be my red point ones. I did hope that maybe, but realistically, no. So I kept my training capacity still pretty high at this point and the days down there, I wasn't making myself like fully rested and ready to go. It was just like, get down there, re-familiarize myself with the nuances of the body tension and movements and all those little like hip tweaks and everything because it had been a few years since 2019 since I'd last been on it. Olympics, injuries, rain, all of the things just got in the way and now it's 2023. And now it's raining outside as well. Hopefully it's not too distracting on the audio. I've got the garage door open. Um, later. So a typical week would look like Monday rest, Tuesday would be like a capacity day either at the crag or at the gym plus a bit of strength, Wednesday rest, Thursday would be a board session with a little bit of strength as well, Friday rest, Saturday would be a high quality session at the cliff really focusing just on the route, just single like this is my goal for today. Sunday would then be a training day as well, board session, strength. A capacity day at the cliff would generally be four to five tie-ins, which might be like two to three on the main project, and then one or two tie-ins on something in that like 30 to 33 range for me, which is that like kind of on-site to a few goes sort of level. Those laps at the end of the day are a really great opportunity for me to try and repeat something that I know I can do, but is gonna require some real effort. I've gotta stay focused and execute moves well as if I am on red point, and it's a really great opportunity to just like kind of low key test where I'm at. The day will generally leave me feeling pretty pooped, but I've not dug a massive hole that's gonna take days to get out of. I'll feel it the next day, but generally pretty good after that. If I'm in the gym, this will generally be like a 15 to 25 move circuit. I'll rest for about eight minutes after each one and do this seven times. Eight minutes rest because five minutes is too short, 10 minutes is too long and don't get too scientific, just chill, get back on. My strength sessions would generally involve like some front levers because I just felt that like that stuff was really good because my project's quite steep. I'd then do some campusing on like a 25 mil kind of edge, something kind of good enough, one, four, seven, nine or thereabouts. Sometimes I'd go bigger rungs, nice jug kind of things and try and do like one, five, nine, just like big pulls, really explosive power generally a minute's rest in between left hand and then right hand. I then do six to seven TRX flies and then do this exercise that I've just recently come up with, TRX pull through thing. I'd have a nine kilo weight vest on in this inclined position and just like pulling up, pull up and then like a one arm pull and then another one and swapping one foot, two feet and pulling the rings out nice and wide, basically trying to simulate what it feels like to be on my project. I'd do it for just over 60 seconds because that would be how long it takes for me to climb that whole 15 move sequence in one crack. And this felt awesome. Right at the very end, the last couple of jump moves for me on my project, I'd just go like uh, and try and do like two really hard fast pulls 
My arms would be dead, but it would feel good. I do this whole circuit three to four times and generally feel like pretty smoked, but again, not like dug into a vicious hole. If you are finding this video helpful, I'd love it if you could hit the like button. It helps spread it round on the YouTube algorithm and share it with more people and hopefully they can get some value out of it as well. And this new board, it's like, it's that close to putting holds on. I've got all of these awesome new, hang on. I've bought a heap of new ones, got some rad new wooden ones coming, like, I am so psyched. Speaking of boards, I have two versions of a board session that I was doing through this training period. One was basically just a max boulder session, trying hard boulders, trying hard moves, high quality attempts, high quantity of rest. Feels really good and you're just doing your thing. The other is an exercise that I used back in 2019 to great effect. Basically involves three boulders, around five moves each, at around that kind of flash level. So for me, this is around V10, and they're boulders that I knew reasonably well. The boulders are trying to replicate the style of climbing, not necessarily the exact moves. For me on this project, it's all about keeping tension through the toes, hard body transitions. Nothing really gets an opportunity to just relax. It's not like just hucking to a good edge, taking a cut loose, swinging the feet back on. You've got to hold everything on all of the time. So these boulders were trying to do that. I then do boulder number one, rest for about 20 seconds, boulder number two, rest for 20 seconds, boulder number three, rest for about six minutes. I do the three boulders four times. Lap number one felt pretty in control, but you know, you're working. Number two, working a bit harder, but still getting in there. Number three, I was really having to work hard, maybe at like a 70-30 success rate, so getting it done most of the time, but I'd really need to be concentrating at this point, really executing quite well and going, and a few noises might come out. And then lap number four, this is where it's really working. Maybe I'd do boulder one and then I'd fall off at half height on boulder two and three. I'd keep the same boulders for four or five sessions. Generally by that point, I'd be getting through the fourth rep and feeling pretty good on it, so it was time to make the switch. After five or six days of trying the route that season, it felt like it was time to actually like zero in and start having some proper red point goes. So I halved the amount of training that I was doing on everything except for that three boulder circuit because I was still feeling some really good gains coming through there and I just didn't want to let that go. At this point, I wasn't going down unless the conditions were going to be pretty good. I'm not being a condition snob here, but it just felt like I was wasting my time and my skin if I was going down there and it was misty. Just wasn't worth it. Those fairy tale against the odds sends can come sometimes, but Generally, it's not the case. I find that staying mentally fit through this period is just as important as staying physically fit. Just save the brain juice. There were a few days of rain that happened as I was focusing in on those red point days, but I would just transition that to like dusting off a few old board projects and treating it like a red point day on them. It was actually really good because I got a few of them done and just made me feel like I was on the right track. And it's an awesome opportunity in a low stress environment to just like, cool, this is something hard that I haven't climbed before. I'm gonna walk up to the wall with confidence, try and do it. Then last Tuesday, day nine of the season and third go of the day, I did it. Oh. And it felt so unbelievably good. It's the hardest piece of climbing I feel like I've ever done. I have no idea of the grade. Anyone that has dived deep, deep, deep on a first ascent red point will understand where I'm coming from here. But there's a certain point where the difficulty just doesn't make sense anymore. I'm going to need like Jakob or Alex or Adam or someone to come over and actually just like tell me <laughs> what it actually is because I have no reference point other than the fact that it pushed me harder than anything else I've ever been on in my entire life. It's pretty fun and regardless of whatever the grade ends up being, I'm just stoked to finally put it to bed. I'm working on a full video to try and capture that whole experience that I had on it. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.